This is Rock'em with Jam Man. This is with Rich Hall. How you doing, man? I'm good. A little tired, but yeah. <laughs> it's the end of the day for me. It's probably the end of the day for you. Yeah, it sure is, man. Just, you know, we're all tired every single day. I got school in the morning, and you got work to do. So. Yo, always working. Always got to put that good eight hours in to kind of feel fulfilled at the end of the day. So Got to get that shmoney. Schmutter money. <laughs> drip, drip. Uh, I'll fight you, man. Life is good, you know. Um, everyone is happy and healthy in my house. And, uh, you know, looking forward to this gallery show. It's kind of, you know, a really important thing in my life. It's my first gallery show, at, you know, ever. You know, not counting bars and restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So it's very... It feels very fulfilling to get it to see the end result at this point and getting it to see it on the wall would be like the culmination of the hard work of over these past four months. So yeah, it's all about the and super grateful for even like having the opportunity to do this and like just again you know. Doing the, doing the work for it, not expecting it to come to me and just letting my art and to show itself. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Congratulations, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Congratulations. Very good. Those who are watching and not familiar with you yet, why don't you give me your backstory? So, I started... Well, I'm... St- I'm involved in music. Um, I used to book at the club, CBGB's. I, I worked there for 11 years, 2005 to... No, sorry. 1995 through 2006. Um, I started uh, my professional career as a show promoter there in 98. Um, I started doing shows very early at age and like luckily I had this club this legendary club to book shows at and I was really grateful at the timeline of the, what bands were coming out like the botch poison the well Isis I hate God soul and green that whole relapse um relapse hydrahead Revelation, just Trust Kill, Ferret, all those bands were just coming out, and I had the opportunity to book them numerous times. So that's how my pop. That's where I gained my popularity. Um, I moved to the the West Coast ten years ago. I kind of stopped doing it for a little bit. Um, I went to art school my whole life, and then I was just like, I'm gonna do this for a little bit. And see how it works out, just just for a side gig, and then it became my main my main gig, and then the years progressed. I got back into music fully. I helped, you know, I helped do a lot of festivals and everything, and you know, just getting back into music and booking all these bands again. So, and then this, you know, this art show came about this year, and I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> let's do it you know so it's finally paying off that hard work you know well i understand you have a big art art show coming tell me how you went from etsy to your own show man tell me about that again just self-promoting um just just using the this using my east coast hustle blood to like keep Keep promoting. Thank God for social media. You know, promoting myself on Facebook, Instagram. Um, having all these friends in the industry, like having these already like implanted eyes on me to see all this and help grow. Um, the Etsy stuff. It's it's kind of funny. You have to do. Let's. How do you how do you want to put this? How do I want to... You have to do the Star Wars and the pet portraits to do your own kind of passion stuff. So that's how that worked. That that, that it, it comes hand in hand. 
You know, so it's even like doing shows. You got to do all the shows that you don't want to do to get the big bands you want. And then you can apply that to art. You know, you you could you got to do the small stuff to get the big fish. So this is my big fish and I'm at this point. I'm like I'm not going to look back. So I'm ready to go even bigger and more gallery shows each year, so so what you're trying to say is that you got to go for the small gigs first, and then if you do all the, the small gigs, you can finally get a big gig. That's right. You just got to put the work in. A lot of people just, you know, because it's on social media or it's, you know, you know a, a specific person, like, you think you already have that advantage, and you don't. You know, you may think, and you're going to get bummed out when you get let down, when you finally figure out, like... Yeah, that person's in it for itself as well. So you got to put in that work. So it could be also self gratifying, but also, you know, you can you can do it. You don't have to be you you if you if you're if you are yourself, you can go anywhere you want. So I apply that. I, I'm teaching my kid that. You know, he's four right now. You know, but. You know, we work for ourselves in this household. You know, we make sure, like, nothing's taken for granted. Even though I know six million people, I st we, st we still got to, like, work, do the work. So it's self-gratifying. And, you know, don't really ask for anything because when you use those people, they're going to ask. They're going to use you in the long run. Or <laughs> at the end, when you're up at top, you're like, well, you know. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with helping people that help me so but you got to put that work in it's so self-gratifying like and i've done that throughout shows like promoting shows just my day jobs when i you know like um just anything i do i have to apply it so you always been interested in art yeah i when i was Around your age, a little bit younger, my sister wanted to go to fashion school, and she started drawing and doodling and stuff, and, like, I was like, oh, I could do that, too, you know, and I was a big comic fan, I'm still a big comic fan, and I just, I was that artist, I was that art, I was that kid that looked at a piece of art, and, like, I could do this, and, like, do it exact and like it blew my parents mind and they're like okay you're doing this <laughs> you know so and then you know um it kind of got you know after college i kind of got sidetracked with music because i found my niche in music and i kind of like i at that time i didn't know i can really do both i was so so involved in just bands and shows and stuff like that I just kind of push that aside, like, oh, yeah, that's whatever, that's stupid. But, you know, there's a lot of people who did both at the same time and, like, are amazing, you know? So I just, it's, it's not a regret. I just I just look back at it, you know? But, but I never really stopped doing art, you know? I applied that art doing shows and, like, you know, who's the right band fits here and, like, just apply, you just apply a lot of, artistic things into a different medium it's it helped me when i wanted to come back to art it was there already so like it was just a, a smooth transition so basically your art show well your art career started with like saying you know what i can do this better than you i'm gonna prove that to you little sis yeah pretty much <laughs> big sis <laughs> big sis yeah yeah I've seen a couple of those pieces, man, that you put out ahead of the show. Oh, my God, man. They look awesome, dude. Thank you. Have you ever, uh, about doing your uh, comic or graphic novel, thought about it? <sighs> I, <laughs> I have writer friends that gave me treatments, all this, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. I, I, I have three pages done and I just can't focus on a comic type deal. It has to be one piece. Um, I think in college when my I went to when I went to School of Visual Arts, I was in the cartooning program 
and I wanted to do something off the cuff, like as how as my art goes right now. But my teachers were so old school that they were like, "Well, you can't do this." And I, like every time I get to that, you know, panel by panel thing, I just I just back out of it. I'm like, I can't do it. But one day, <laughs> one day I will try to get one. 20 page comic done for and that's it and like shut everyone up <laughs> like here it is and i'm done you know so soon <laughs> but I'm heavily inspired by comics still um the art and like just the technology to do like the comic coloring and the separations and stuff just totally inspired me like yeah, it can be done a little bit easier than pen and ink and Xerox than it was back then, you know, so. Maybe you could team up with uh, Garrett Way. Who's that? Uh, Rick and Chromance? Wait. Like, oh, Chemical Romance. Chemical oh, romance. Gerard Way, you mean. My bad. I went to school with Gerard in School of Visual Arts. I think when I went to music, he kept on going to comics. I think he took my job that I wanted at DC Comics. And I just went to do shows and worked at CBGB's. But that's, you know, that's another story. <laughs> but I would, love to, I would love to, like, I mean, Gerard's, you know, astronomical popular right now. And I'll be like, hey, remember me, dude? You know, like, hey, you know, like, look what I do now, you know, so... One day, maybe we can like team up on something. It's like trying to find your long uh, best friend, you know, after a couple of years, and he's like this famous guy, like, bro, remember me, bro? I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm at the bottom with all the little girls screaming, like, remember me? <laughs> you know, oh I'm right here. Look at me. <laughs> remember me? Remember we had lunch all those times. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? guys become friends uh when how? how oh how just like you know we were in the same cartooning class and like you know like we just bonded over like our love for comics and what we like you know what we liked and like drawing styles and stuff and you know we just became friends and then you know of course music stuff as well you know we liked the same bands or type of bands or whatever bands he was into i would be in like i would check out or you know vice versa so it was a cool class. It was a, like I have a couple of friends still to that that were in that class, but like no one famous as Gerard, you know. So, um, yeah. So yeah, just you know, college chums, you know, digging on the same things. Little guy right there. Yeah, that's my little guy. He up right behind you. Uh huh. Yeah. Big concert promoter, but you started out as a merch guy. How did you make the jump from merch tables? Um, so I, um, my friend Matt Young, an old friend, he was basically like, I want you to do sales. You know, a lot of people, you know how to talk to people, you know, help my company out. Yeah. Go down, go downstairs. I know I see it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so, uh, he, so my friend Matt Young, he was like, "You should work with me." You know, it's a cool like, you know, company. And basically, you know, it just clicked in a way. You know, um, I got on the phone. Hey, you want to buy this cool T-shirt? This band's touring. You know, it was also music related. So, like, I knew all the bands already. You know, My Chemical Romance was one of my bands because I knew Gerard. You know what I mean? And, like, it was just an easy transition. Like, everyone trusted me to, you know, do the right thing by them business-wise. So, like, um, but, yeah, you know, like, I just, it was just, it, was, it wasn't it was really a hard transition. It was just still talking to managers and bands and booking agents and, you know, mom and pop stores. It was no problem, you know. Like, it was, it was definitely a cool thing to kind of get under my belt, you know. As an artist, you know, you... You want to see how things are made because you start, you make things from scratch yourself, you know, 
oh how how does this work and that you know how you know how do you get this onto the t-shirt you know and you learn all these processes and it's really great you know so just you know as a business you know business side like are you giving your customer the best product and an artist side side does it look good to sell you know so it, it, it kind of just everything just applied with art you know and just just you apply it back to whatever's handed to you yeah. So everything's like art related and stuff? Yeah. Okay, go downstairs, please. I have this. I know. Go. Okay. All right. Go. <laughs> He's a Hot Wheels collector. Oh, uh, he is? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of Hot Wheels in there. I know you do. The first concert was Poison, Winger, and Warrior. How did you go from hair bands to being the king of the underground? <laughs> well... My cousin was like, you need, you know, you need to come to this concert and all this. And we listened to metal bands and stuff like that. And, you know, like, it was cool. It was cool. Like, it was a, it was a, it was a crazy, like, stadium show. So it was like an experience. And then, you know, throughout, I mean, I grew up in a big music-oriented house. So, like, music was on more than the TV was on. So, like, it was just natural to kind of go through that progression um i'm always curious about everything even like in high school like you know i would i i think from 11 to maybe like 14 i always wanted to go to another continent and then in high school i was able to go to do stuff by myself and got to see a lot more music than anything um especially being from new york city so it was just everywhere. Um, and then, you know, I guess I just, again, I just wanted, like, same as the merchandise. How does it work? How does, how do you set up a show? What do you mean? What's a guarantee? How much, you know, like, what pieces fit into this puzzle called music? You know, a live show. Like, oh, how much does production cost? You know, like, all that kind of stuff. So it was it's very intriguing you know it was, i'm a very intrigued person i'm like how's it work let me see lift the curtain let me see how it goes <clears throat> here let me see, how does this light bulb work bro just tell me i'm very intrigued to know this just tell me so let me see the gears let me see what gears how much do the gears course cost to fix you know you know so it's definitely oh, like a cool it, i mean i still like how does this work how does like painting oil painting work like what methods do you use i want to know just so i it's under my belt in a way <laughs> you know my batman utility belt like okay cool click now i got it when i need it like so it, like music was definitely a, it's still a big part of our lives i met my wife through music promoting a show I'm, I'm you know my friends i've had for 30 plus years music you know so it's definitely a I and also I've actually um, I can't I couldn't be here without them so that's that's basically <laughs> how I became who I am because of my friends and music so and sometimes you just got to be a friend person you know yeah explain to me what the underground scene is excuse me explain to me what the underground scene is. Well, the underground scene, I mean, all right, let's take a band like Slipknot. They're mainstream metal. But there's so many layers and bands that are doing it at a smaller level where, like, Slipknot just plays last night here in Seattle. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, you know, they played for, like, 20,000 people. And... I I grew I grew into a a place where it was only maybe twenty people came to a show, you know, <laughs> and like no one really knows where a band like Slipknot started. So like, I I like I like to be at the starting point. I like to be at the end point. <laughs> so like the underground to me, um, it it's been underground stuff. It's really it's really just where you started, like. Let's say a farm team, a minor league team, and, you know, you get to the majors and stuff like that. So, like, um, 
Yeah. So you just, and again, you just got to do the work to be that bigger band like Slipknot, you know, like, and I, I love, I love seeing, I love being in the underground because the bands are so, they have the right mindset, they have the right um, passion to do it, and and they want to work up until that level, so that's why I kind of like stick with the underground, and a lot of these bands, the bigger bands, they want to come back and like, well, this is where we started why not we just do a free show at this little club and just have fun, you know? That's all it is, you know? Because when it comes to that bigger point, it gets the business weighs you down, <laughs> you know, the managers and the publicists, even though I love my publicists. Um, so um, it just, sometimes you just need a break and you get back where you started and kind of like reset your mind so that's where like that's why i like love the underground more than a mainstream thing you did a lot of at uh you did a lot of stuff at uh, cbgb's what was that like back then i took it for granted you know now that it's been closed fifth it's going to be 17 years um i never like i i because uh, I also worked there as security. I was like, oh, this is my job. You couldn't really separate the two. And then when you, you're you at a home like that and it's gone, you're like, I really wish we had that again. And, but it was definitely a special time in my life. And looking back and like I had free reign on this globally popular you know, historic club, and it was just like, ah, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> you know, like, ah, I can't be late again. You know, I just took it, things for granted. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's, def, it's definitely special, and it, and the best part of it was sharing it with my friends and bands and stuff like that as well, because they have that special memory as well. Like, oh my god, I'm on the same s stage as Johnny Thunder, you know, or the Ramones, or, you know, whoever, the cro back then, or Youth of Today, you know, or television, you know, so, like, that makes me, that makes me, like, smile, like, yeah, we, we did it together, you know, and I love it, so, it's, it's a special place in my, in my heart, and I'm, I, I'm, every time I'm back in New York, I have to go back and see it. And I cry my eyes out like a little boy, and because it was my home for eleven plus years, so it, it it's near and dear to my heart. Remember, did you catch the Ramones or the Misfits there? What was that? Did you ever get to catch the Ramones or the Misfits there? I no, I never really. No, I didn't catch the Ramones, but the Ramon. Joey Ramon used to come through every time, and like I was lucky enough, he remembered my name, and even that, like even that was like so cool. And then, you know, like you know, just walk in, you know, you see Joey Ramon. He's seven foot tall, you know. Of course, you're gonna wave him through, you know. He built that place, so um, seeing him, I think seeing him more than seeing the band play is special enough. Um, but the Misfits, I didn't ever get to see them. I did get to see Bad Brains when they played before they closed, but that was a whole nother ordeal. <laughs> Weird ordeal. Um, what's the biggest band you ever booked? The biggest band I ever booked... I, I'm gonna probably have to say In Flames, or... Currently, My Chemical Romance, they played CBGBs a couple of times. Um, I booked them. Yeah, those two are like the probably the biggest. Who had, who had the craziest writer? I never, I never really, if I saw a crazy writer, I would just exit out. I'd be like, here's the buyout. Here's some pizza. I can't help you. Um, you know, um, when I was working under my friend Tyler King, he was the guy, the promoter before me. 
he's machine head played and he got a whole indian feast for them and i'm like i'm never doing that if i ever did shows and i never really did <laughs> you know i never really had to get socks or clean underwear for people so i never really had a i never really cared for writers and like and no one i never really got any like bounce back for it you know like okay rich no problem <laughs> you know like i never really had no trouble when i didn't fulfill a writer you know so i know you try to say, uh sign the lamb of god or uh sorry the land of uh, god early and when they burn the priest what happened with that well, it kind of got dead in the water. We were so jazzed up on Burn the Priest and like we were ready to sign it and ready to sign it. And then we f we remembered our the guy who paid the bills at the label I was with, MIA Records, was from Texas and a Southern Baptist. So if we came to him and said, hey, we have this band called Burn the Priest. Would you like to sign them? We would have been all fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, we missed out on that one. <laughs> well, we had them, um, but we did sign Darkest Hour to their first record. Unfortunately, the label folded uh, shortly thereafter, and that record actually got released on Victory. But with Lamb of God, it was basically like, we had them, but we can't bring them to our boss, boss to sign them. And we tried, and we just got this... <laughs> look like we like peed on the floor and we were like okay no worries next band we want to sign you know so but you know i'm friends with randy for a long time and we kind of still laugh about it so you know i think a cool uh cook graphic novel would be like about you oh sorry cool graphic novel would be of all all about randy and the incident and craig like you can team up with him and really get in his head and everything like that Wait, what was the question you were breaking up? Uh, you know, I think a cool graphic novel would be, like, all about Randy and the incident in Prague. Like, you could team up with him and get in his head and let everyone know what he was going through mentally. I would love to. I would love to do that. I would love to sit down with Randy and, like, what's wrong? Let's let's paint it out. Let's What colors do you want? You know, let's let's do this. You know, I think... He's that person who would definitely um, convey it the right way. You know, like, he would be, like, honest about it. And I think with my style, it would probably, like, serve it justice. I think it would be a cool concept. How do my followers follow you? What? How do my followers follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at rich underscore hall um that's my main that's my main website quote unquote um twitter same rich hall underscore hall across the board with all the socials music are you into what music am i into i like a lot of hip-hop i love a lot of metal i love hardcore i love metalcore um, my, the bands I'm listening to right now. Let's see my Spotify real quick. Let's click that open. We're gonna get deep. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. um I love Caven. I love the the band Gospel. They just released a new album. Uh, for rap, Pusha T. Um, who else? Uh, Cult of Luna, I've been listening to a lot of. So those bands have been studio jams for sure. What about Nas? I love me some Nas. He's from Queens, man. 718, you know? <laughs> Queensbridge. New York State of Mind. New York State of Mind, always. Your state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're on death row, and it's your final meal. What is on your menu? Wow. I never really thought about it. Um... I always try to stay out of trouble, but I guess they got me. And I got—I <laughs> guess they got me. Uh, my final meal. All right, I'll say a nice, a pile of chicken cutlets or like Popeyes chicken sandwiches, French fries, 
and a really tall root beer. Yeah. You know you can also get a buffet, right? You know you can get like pints of ice cream and stuff like that. No, I'll just I'll just be full and enjoy the. Just all right, I'm good. Flip the switch. Let's do this. You know. If you didn't have any superpower. What would you choose? Soup. Superpower. Oh, superpower. Um, I would like to fly or run really fast. I hate flying an airplane, so I'll just like run. Oh, I have to go here. I'm gonna run. You know, <laughs> um, that's about it. I don't want to read anyone's minds. I really don't want to know what anyone else is thinking. Oh. <laughs> no way, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think run. I think run real fast so I can get to cool places and check them out and then run right back home. Like, okay, cool. You know. <laughs> well, like, Peter, you want uh, faster than sound. What was the first option? Uh, light speed or run faster than sound? I think light speed. Just get yeah. there quick. Like kind of like not even teleport, but like light speed. I'm done. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> so it almost looks like uh actually like teleporting because like you're going the speed of light and that's six hundred fifty four miles per hour. No, I would love to teleport places. I would love to teleport my family to Japan. Like, all right, go to Japan for the next six hours. Boop. There we go. <laughs> okay, we got to go back home. We got to feed the dog. Boop. We'll to go. <laughs> Sorry about uh, acting a little geeky there about the Flash thing and stuff. Oh I, oh, I love the whole Flash and Flashpoint and just him always trying to race Superman. So it's I'm on point with you, man. I'm, I'm with you. Well... Thank you for being on my show. I hope the next time he talks at the backstage on one of your shows, dude, or at one of your shows, bro. It's been a lot of time talking, man. Thanks a lot, Jam Man. Really peace. Let me get a picture, bro, please. Yes. All right, I'll send you my address. Okay, cease. All right, peace. Okay. All right, terrific. Perfect. Uh, you're recording. Can you hit stop recording? Uh...